No edits, no myths, just pure manufacturing power. Factory Founder shows you the truth behind production. Every year, more than one billion tires reach the end of their usable life. And unlike organic waste, tires do not decay, they do not dissolve into the soil, and they do not simply disappear. Instead, they accumulate, stacking higher and wider across landfills, open yards, and illegal dumping grounds, creating one of the most stubborn environmental challenges of the modern world. And this is exactly where a massive tire recycling factory comes into play. Not as a small recycling center, but as a heavy industrial ecosystem, engineered to handle scale, volume, and relentless demand, operating day and night, processing thousands of tires every single hour, beginning far outside the factory walls, where the true magnitude of the problem becomes visible in the form of enormous outdoor stockyards filled with mountains of old, cracked, rust-stained tires, some stacked neatly, others collapsed under their own weight, including passenger car tires, heavy truck tires, agricultural tires, and giant industrial off-road tires once used on mining and construction equipment. The tires begin their journey into the factory itself, where the atmosphere changes instantly. The sound becomes deeper and more mechanical. Conveyors begin to move, motors hum, and tires roll forward in a controlled flow, leaving behind their final moments as complete objects. Entering massive rotating cleaning drums where high-pressure water jets blast away years of dirt, mud, sand, and road debris, sending contaminated water into filtration channels below, while the rubber surfaces emerge darker and cleaner. Then passing through powerful air jet tunnels where compressed air strips away remaining moisture and fine particles, preparing the tires for one of the most difficult stages in the entire process, the removal of the steel bead, the thick, nearly indestructible steel rings embedded in the edges of every tire that lock it onto a wheel rim. As specialized machines clamp each tire in place, cutting wheels advance slowly, sparks erupt as steel meets steel, and hydraulic pullers apply controlled force until the bead wire snaps free from the rubber body and drops into metal collection bins, instantly separating rubber and steel into two distinct recycling streams. With the rubber now flexible and safe to process further, moving forward on conveyors toward the heart of the factory, where the primary shredder waits, an enormous machine built not for speed, but for brute torque, featuring twin rotating shafts lined with massive steel teeth scarred by years of cutting, as the tire reaches the edge and gravity pulls it downward, the blades grab hold, collapsing sidewalls. Twisting the tire violently, tearing it apart piece by piece until within seconds the tire loses all recognizable form and becomes heavy, irregular chunks of rubber marking the irreversible point of transformation. After which, the shredded material exits onto conveyors, still warm from friction, carrying traces of tread patterns and occasional steel strands, flowing into secondary shredders where faster spinning blades take over. reducing the rubber further into smaller, more uniform pieces, while dust suppression systems activate to control airborne particles. And at this stage, magnets begin their work in earnest, suspended above the moving rubber stream.
generating powerful magnetic fields that cause hidden steel wires to snap upward instantly, peeling away from the rubber and clumping together on separate belts. While the rubber continues forward uninterrupted, monitored constantly by sensors scanning for metal contamination, particle size, and flow rate, feeding live data to control panels where operators make fine adjustments to maintain precision. Gradually transforming chaotic waste into consistent industrial feedstock then moving into the granulation fair enclosed machines equipped with high-speed blades slice the rubber into controlled chips, smaller and cleaner than before. followed again by magnetic separation to remove even microscopic steel fragments, ensuring the rubber stream becomes nearly pure. Yet even here, the work is not finished, because different industries require different rubber sizes. So the crumb rubber enters multi-layer vibrating sieving systems, where screens separate material by exact dimensions, Oversized particles remaining above while fine granules pass through, creating multiple output streams destined for different uses. Before entering the fine grinding stage, where precision mills reduce the rubber into crumb, breaking it down into tiny granules that flow smoothly like black sand, producing a steady, controlled stream that signals a major milestone in the process. with samples continuously pulled into on-site laboratories where technicians test moisture content, particle distribution, elasticity, and residual metal levels to ensure every batch meets strict specifications. And only once approved does the rubber move into the final commercial phase, where automated bagging machines fill, weigh, seal, and label industrial bags with extreme accuracy. each marked with batch numbers, grades, and timestamps for full traceability. While bulk buyers receive massive one-ton jumbo bags that are filled, vibrated to settle contents, sealed, tagged, and palletized using robotic systems, 
then transported by forklifts into clean, Organized warehouses where finished product awaits shipment. As trucks are loaded, containers sealed, and recycled rubber leaves the factory to re-enter the world, not as waste, but as a resource. such as athletic tracks, playground surfaces, road construction, becoming shock-absorbing playground floors, high-performance sports tracks, quieter and more durable roads, industrial mats, tiles, and countless other applications. While behind the scenes, the factory continues operating without pause. Supported by dust filtration systems that clean the air, water recycling loops that reuse wash water, emissions monitoring stations that ensure compliance, Endless piles of discarded tires that would otherwise sit for centuries on one side, and a disciplined, engineered system on the other that transforms pollution into purpose, disorder into structure, and waste into value. Proving that modern tire recycling is not simple, not small, and not optional, but a relentless industrial process operating at massive scale. Preventive maintenance teams that keep machines running smoothly, shift workers who rotate seamlessly, and control rooms that monitor every variable around the clock until the contrast becomes impossible to ignore.